Hi everyone, welcome back. So today's film is talking about and trying to explain the benefits of colour correcting your complexion. So basically using the theory of colour and neutralising those unwanted undertones in your skin before you put your makeup on. Um, now I think most of us know that red is neutralised by green, but do we just know that or do we actually know that because of the colour wheel. So this is my trusty colour wheel that I've had for, for donkey's years. Um, and very simply, to understand how it works, is that the colours that are lying opposite each other, so for instance, we have red, which lies opposite green. So any redness in your skin, so maybe psoriasis, sunburn, um, acne scarring, any kind of redness, any veins, by putting a little bit of green very lightly over that area diminishes the impact of that colour. So that when you go on to use your corrector, your foundation or your concealer, then it's much, much lighter. So it's just a way of being able to correct your skin so that you don't have to then put a lot of makeup on. That's the basics of it. Obviously, you don't have to do this. It's just an option and it really works, especially underneath the eyes. Now, underneath the eyes is slightly more tricky because sometimes people have quite purpley under eyes um, bags. The blue discoloration under here can be quite blue or grey. Um, so you just need to use the colour wheel, which you can pull up on Google very, very quickly. So it's there to hand if you want to try this out. Um, if you've got quite a purpley um, under eye, you want to kind of go in with, with a yellow. If your under eye area is slightly more blue, then you need to go in with a kind of ready orange or an orange. The same with the violet, you go in with the yellow. So everything is completely opposite. Um, and that is a tried and tested guide on what colours will work for you. Now, it isn't that simple, obviously, because the paler your skin, you don't want to go in. So say, for instance, you're finding that you're, um, you're quite bluey um, and violety underneath your eyes, but you've got a pale skin. You need to go in for something with a little bit of a yellow and just in that area. But you want to make sure that it's not too rich and not too deep. So just bear that in mind. The darker your skin tone, you'll find that the darker the areas under your eyes are. So if you are of Indian origin, African origin, you'll find that using sort of much more vibrant oranges and sometimes red really helps to cancel out those darker colors so it lifts that area for you. There is a little bit of trial and error in this process and that's why it's great to use a colour wheel. Now Steeler does a really good one, um, which I don't have to hand, but I'll pop it in my Instagram stories when I put the post out. Um, my trusted one is from Ben Nye. Um, I've had this for a number of years, it lasts forever. Um, and it's great for me because I can really play with all my different colours. So I can darken the green slightly, I can soften the bright orange, I can use the lilacs and the pink or maybe kind of much more paler sort of Irish Asian complexions and when you put the colour on you see the effect quite quickly if you feel that you put a colour on the area of your skin that you want to cancel out then you will probably think oh no I don't like it it just looks too muddy then you know that it's wrong so let's have a little play oh aside from that also pixie does some really nice under eye pencils as well. Um, this one, so it's called Bright Under Eye, um, and there are two shades, I believe. One is pinky and one is orangey. The pinker one will work better for a paler skin, and the orangey one will work better for a warmer toned skin, and they're very effective. And I actually quite like, I'll show maybe one of these under my eyes. It is all about the texture of these colour correctors. Um, that's important. You want them to be sheer and soft and slightly dry so they don't move too much when you put your foundation on. So for me, um, I would be using my green colour corrector, which I will apply a little bit with my finger all around uh, my nose area. And I'll apply it just almost with the same kind of pattern that I do with my concealer. 
So I've got the redness around here and then just sort of around the edges of my lips, always around my nose, which is so annoying. Um, I used to have terrible, terrible skin and I would basically use a very bad textured green um, colour corrector over my face. Um, but the formulas have improved so much more now. But it really, really does help. Kind of, if you're really in a pickle with the undertones of your skin as well and it's really getting you down, there is something quite nice about these colours neutralising the colour so that when you start to actually put on your makeup, it feels better. You don't feel like you're kind of at the bottom of the mountain really trying to change something that's going to take a lot of makeup to change the impact. So I felt that was quite calming. Now, where I have my pigmentation, which is lightning, since I'm having my lovely lasering, um, if I want to lift this, I'm going to take this little fan brush and for the browner colours, I want to use a lilac. I'm just going to show you. That's all around this side. It's always the right side, <clears throat> especially if you drive in the UK because you drive on the right side. So if you're driving around, you haven't got SPF and the sun shoots in on that left side. I mean, I don't know whether that is actually a thing, but it's my thing. But now, obviously, I've always got like massive 50 SPF on. So hopefully I'm, I've literally gone off the subject, but just explaining why. And will you let me know, is your, depending on where you drive, on which side of the car you drive, in which part of the world, let me know whether it's your left or right. The driver's side that has more pigmentation than the other. Anyway, we like to digress on this channel. Um, so I've got in with my lilac now and I'm just going to take it over this one here but I'm finding that it's a little bit vibrant. Can you see how it's a little bit too much? So I'm going to go in with a little bit of the peach now just over the top of the lilac and that calms that down because it was a little bit too vibrant for my skin. My skin being like a little bit paler or the pigmentation a little bit darker, that would have been fine. The lilac colours are also great. If you've got very pale skin and you just really want to kind of give it a little bit of a lift, if you feel grey, lilac is a really lovely colour just to bring those tones out. I'm going to do it the same on the other side. So I'm going to go in with the intensity of the lilac first. And like I say, I've used this. It's so handy for me, obviously, because I have never really know what um, skin issues I'm going to be dealing with when I go to work. So it's wonderful to have this to hand so I can adjust all my colour pigments. I'm going to add a little bit of peach just over the top, just to knock it back slightly. And because you're building up lots of fine, delicate layers, it doesn't appear obvious on the skin. So that's why I'm just using this little fan brush. It's by an American makeup artist called Gillian with a J, Dempsey. Um, but you can use um, any little brush. But you just also want to blend it in, especially the edges. So you kind of get the colour correction placed on the area that you want it and then you fan out the rest. Um, you can also do like a little bit on your eyelids. So um, if you can see from my colour wheel here, so I'm sort of slightly sort of browny, sort of that sort of tobacco-y brown on my lids. So if I look for that in the colour wheel, the opposite of that is a little bit of blue. So I'm going to put a little bit of lilac-y colour just across there. And you can see just how that lifts and takes away that sort of stained look to my lid. And as you can see, it is very, very light. This is why this is my favourite. Some of the palettes um, that you can buy in Boots and Superdrug, apart from the Steeler one, uh, can be a little bit too creamy and then they move around. But look how wonderful. Just, you can still see the texture of skin. It doesn't look like makeup, but in comparison, it really takes out that kind of yellowy finish to your skin. So it's all about identifying the areas of your face that you want to lift and change if you so wish um, and neutralize so that your foundation and your concealer isn't as heavy as an overall result and that's simply what this does and especially if you want to have something that's really really light now you wouldn't put on a tinted moisturizer for now um, i would go in with something a little bit heavier because obviously it will show you can see how the green has slightly faded the um i'm just going to put in a little bit of yellow 
just to tap that around the edges of the lilac because you want it to graduate into your skin but it's still going to look obvious and then I'll show you how to apply the um, makeup so this is the CC plus actually in light um, and I would just apply this with my fingers but because I don't want it to move I'm going to use one of my little beauty pie sponges um, I'm not wetting it down because I want full coverage and I'm just going to pat it over the top and really it's an up and down motion like that because if you do this and you sweep it you're going to move the color corrector to other areas of your face and it's not going to be in the area that you want to really conceal didn't do my under eye did I? that's annoying let's go back to the under eye just move that base away from there actually and I'll come back to that area in a minute I'll just finish the skin getting carried away so you can see from before knowing how many makeups I've done before I will often put my foundation on and then especially around this kind of crown area of my head um, I will have to always go in with a little bit of concealer over the top but I think that by doing this it is definitely definitely much lighter and not needed it's such a clever thing right so let's go in with the pixie um, just so I can show you the texture what I like about them and over time that will fade obviously oh and that's really bright we can see that they are slightly beveled so it helps you get a little bit of a point to get right in to that inner corner so it's really creamy I can get it right into that area but again only apply the color corrector just where that bluey gray area is let's try the peach one here now you can see in comparison that is too orange for me you can see how this one kind of glided into my skin neutralized it but it didn't look off whereas the orange and it is for a darker skin, much more of an olivey skin or a darker, um, more bluey, grey um, undertone where the darkness is around the eye. So for both of those reasons, that doesn't work. And I just think you just have to be intuitive about it. Does it feel right? Does it, is it improve? Because even though the colour will look like a different colour and not match your skin, you'll definitely be able to see that the colour of what you're trying to conceal has been knocked out. And that's when you know that it's right. So these might work for you but obviously you're only stuck with each one of those colors so that's why it's nice to have like a little palette like this or the Steeler one um, and that can give you some options if you want I think it really really helps um, a lot of my um, clients that I have who have got Asian skin and black skin they really really benefit from having that warmth the yellow or the red almost. Charlotte Tilbury actually does some really nice ones. I think I've used those before, the little pots, the colour correctors. I'll put those on my stories as well. And for darker skins, again, they're, they're really, they really are quite creamy, but they're, they're very pigmented. So I really like those ones as well. I'd forgotten about that. So let's go back in with a pink and we can match up and then I'll just complete the skin. And it'd be a good opportunity for you to ask any other questions down below and I will do my best to answer but can you see how great it is um, Bobby Brown used to do some and I'm not sure whether they still do actually it's only come to my mind now they used to do um, a graduation of, of concealers and then as the concealers got darker depending on the skin tone the more kind of orangey the undertone eye area got that was great so you can't be too specific but if you're mixing it with concealer it, it will definitely help so if under eye darkness is a real bugbear for you this might be something that you want to invest in or at least try but your technique must be over your skincare just in the area that you need and if you've got any sort of like pitted acne scars or anything like that you need to be going in directly and placing it on that area and then going in with the action that I did with your foundation and I would always go for a sort of a medium um, coverage foundation but it has to be in on and off motion otherwise you've just really wasted your time
just patching it all around. So there are lots of, um, uh, do you remember Becca? It's a really, it's a shame that brand isn't around, isn't it? Um, Becca used to do these lovely sort of primers that had, they were called like First Light, and there was a lilac-y one and a pinky one and a sort of peachy one, and that was really nice, but that was more of an all over effect, which is great if you normally have quite an olivey skin, but you haven't had much sun, you feel sort of quite gray, or you've got a very pale Asian Irish skin and you're feeling a bit blue, that would also lift it. Um, but yeah, that's for more of an all over effect, but I just love um, neutralizing any kind of under, unwanted undertones first and then going in with the base because um, if I'm working professionally and I often do my makeup differently on myself when I'm chatting to you to how I would with a client because that's just sort of what I do and I'm seeing someone else's face in my hands and I'm sort of working with that whereas I'm trying to communicate sort of everyday makeup enjoyment I suppose on this channel so it's different isn't it okay so what we'll do is we'll take you're going is it is it I don't know Caroline <laughs> By the way, can we talk about matcha? I've been really enjoying matcha tea um, and the um, Sencha tea uh, from Japan, from Yuji, because obviously I was, not obviously, um, but it's just been so delicious. Any of you guys like matcha? How do you take your matcha? Um, I've actually, my friend reckon, sorry, I'm just putting, my, putting on my concealer, I'm chatting away to you all. Um, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury um, 2.5 fair beautiful radiant skin concealer just because I like the coverage in this and it also gives the dew and I'm going as in a radiance to the skin it doesn't make it flat and dehydrated which is what I love so I'm just placing that in that area now you can see that actually makes my eye area look much much older and drier so I'm going to warm up my hands, warm up my fingers. It's a much thicker texture to what I was using with the colour correctors and the both together for the warmth of my hands. I'm going to pat it, pat it, pat it in. So you've got to be very careful of overloading too much product around the eye area, especially. I should probably do a specific one for just brightening and covering dark circles because there's a few nice little key elements but here I noticed especially I probably put too much on from the sponge so the warmth of your fingers and the tapping motion just like the sponge so you don't want to move anything but you want to just push the pigments together is a really really great tip much much better and if you really feel that your skin has become very dehydrated in appearance, then just put a little bit of hyaluronic on your fingers and do the same motion. And especially around here, fine lines. Oh, we've got a great new eye cream um, going to that. I'm just saying that because I just thought, oh, it does look so much better. Um, this is Medicaid Cristal Retinol. Um, it's their new eye cream. Um, it's just for night. It comes out kind of like an egg yolk yellow. Um, and you put it on at night but it's it's very effective and I haven't used an eye cream for a long time I use them when working with makeup um, but I wouldn't put it on as my everyday sort of skincare routine but this is um this has been rather lovely just chucking that in is another top tip right so in a nutshell I hope that's been helpful look at a color wheel print one out if you want to get used to which colors lie opposite each other to see what undertones you can neutralize with the colors that you have. Place them just in that area, feather them down. If you put the colour on and it is too intense and it really looks very different to your complexion, i.e. it's not sort of morphing or beautifying or connecting with your skin, then it's the wrong colour. So then maybe just lighten it because it's probably going to be too muddy or too dark. So add a little bit of peach or a little bit of yellow or a little bit of lilac just to soften it. If you've got pigmentation, lilac and peach works brilliantly with that, combination of the both. If you've got red, then green works wonderfully. And the dark, dark, dark circles are really lifted by kind of using oranges and deep reds, depending on the colour of pigment of your skin. Um, so I hope that's helpful. Looking forward to hearing what you think. I hope I've explained that clearly enough. 
sometimes when you know something you don't make it simple enough but I'm hoping with the colour wheel and a little palette or maybe trying different things that you've got you can even try like an eyeshadow um, that you might have you could try an eyeshadow that just is a powder over the top just to see whether that would make a difference um, anyway interested to know whether you guys do this as well I know a lot of people do they've got pale skin and they've got a lot of redness because it's hard to fight but do you do it for pigmentation or kind of general dullness to your skin anyway thank you so much and oh yes matcha tips too please um, I use a dose and co creamer in mine that's what I was going to say because it's quite I want to have one a day just because it's so good for me um, but it's yeah I need a little bit of sweetness and so rather than putting honey in is it called dose and co it's called a vanilla creamer um, and it's full of collagen so I put that in with a splash of milk and it's really nice anyway bye for now see you next week